A long green flash like a shot from a pistol, the 1242 on its way into Bristol. Connecting the people, these visionary lines, past sidings and villages keeping to time. Through tunnels and cuttings and junctions we glide, as we speed through the landscape enjoying the ride. Hypnotic rhythm, the hum and the rattle, fields either side with their sheep and their cattle. Smart open carriages, comfy seats too, we sit back and natter and take in the view. Refreshments on tables, our luggage in racks, the sleek metal serpent, the king of the track. Some, they remember the steam days of old, the puffing and hissing and smoking of coal. For journeys cross country to Glasgow and Leeds, the hustle and bustle of Great Temple Meads. Station staff greet you with friendly advice on ticketing, access, connections and price. They guide you to platforms, to coffee and tea, communication in green livery. Ambassadors smiling, enjoying a laugh at Reading and Didcot and Swindon and Bath. We look to the future, we surely can't fail. Sustainable transport just has to be rail. From London to Cornwall, for near and for far, the Great British Railway, GWR. Good afternoon, everyone. Tickets, please. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The train now standing at Platform 1 is the 0712 for early adulthood junction, calling at Nappy Road, Toddler Town, off to School Street, 11 Plus Parkway, Adolescence Boulevard, Young Love Lane, College Court and Apprenticeship Road, arriving at early adulthood junction at 0931. Right, then remember when we went to Opal Park to get the train to Weymouth? Yes, it was And it poured with rain. Yeah. And then it, the sign came up saying this train has been cancelled. Yeah. So we weren't sure what to do. Yeah. So it was your suggestion. What did yeah. you do? Just we walked decide? Along, walked along Moreland Road and caught the bus into town and um, went up to the ticket office to see what we could, how we could get to um, Weymouth. Because the next train was very late and it was like a four hour train journey. We saw a lot of people outside queuing and we said, what are you queuing for? And they, went, and they said, well, they're getting us taxis. And um, so we spoke to the... Yeah, we had to go in and get the tickets sorted, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we had to buy a yeah. ticket. And then uh, outside we had a taxi all the way to the hotel. Yeah. And that was brilliant because it was yeah. so wet as well, wasn't it? Yeah, right outside the hotel yeah, and that yeah. was really yeah. good. Yeah. yeah, we were really happy about that, weren't yeah, we? Yeah, we were. Yeah. They did so they'd done a good job. Yeah. yeah, it was last year, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. We managed to go November before they'd done the lockdown again. Yeah. We just went in time, didn't we? We did. That's yeah. correct, yeah. My friend and I, we decided to go down to Weymouth for the day. We were only there for oh, an hour. So we got back on the train, got off at the little railway station and waited for the connection and it didn't come. So we asked you know, where's the train? They said, well, you, you have to change trains going, but on the way back, you stay on the train. And there wasn't a train. <laughs> Until about quarter past five the following morning, so my friend and I slept on the platform. <laughs> of course, there was no mobile phones. I couldn't let my parents know where I were. We just sort of sat on the seat and yeah. chatted all night and just waiting for... for I think it was the milk train that yeah. got back to Temple Meads. Yeah. Best train for me to go to Western Supermare from when I was little, well, not a little younger, was going through down to Western on this steam train, looking out the windows and getting all the grit and that going into your face from the engines, the steam. You know, it all used to blow back and into your eyes. In them, you had the old carriages. You had a little carriage by yourself, a little box. You had little sliding doors on the corridor, and you'd go in there, and you'd put six of you would sit in there. We sat down, and we could, with the railway going down, it could go clickety clock, clickety clock, with the lines, the wheels going over the lines. But on the, on the train itself, the trains was absolutely marvellous. It was beautiful. Because you, you just hang out the windows. Everybody used to hang out the windows. Yeah, it's, it's gorgeous. We lived by the railway. We used to go over to the wall, which is still there, and I used to watch the trains, go down and catch all the numbers from the trains that used to go by, and they were the big steam trains. We used to come back to what 
in the 50s, the sort of mid-50s. <laughs> and it was used to be by the, the old warehouse that used to do the bananas. And we, if we were lucky, we got a banana from the map on the in the in, in the in the um, in the big sort of big cabin. It was massive place. We never used to go anywhere except on a train because cars weren't available then. Well, we, in those days, we used to go into little tiny compartments. You had the uh, window and the and the passageway. And you used to you know, in your carriage, and you had your old-fashioned window with the cord. With the um, leather strap. Well, you used, to, you used to take sandwiches of some sort, and always a bottle of something, usually squash or something, because in those days you couldn't afford to buy sandwiches and drinks down there. Well, the steam engine just comes from the energy and the majesty of a, one of these things actually in motion. Um, there's, there's nothing to match it. Transport today is really small and quite fragile compared to this, but to see something like this hurtling down a track. Um, will always excite. It's like going to see a waterfall, that always excites. Seeing a steam engine moving is, 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 is breathtaking, at speed anyway. Um, plus, they go on rails. People like things that run to regular times, and I think that particularly appeals to train spotters, and they collect things, and that also appeals. And we thrive on nostalgia. We thrive, and the smell of smoke and coal. A little while less back in Nantia, say, come to England, your, your mother country need you. To, to rebuild England. That's why I'm here. That's why I come here. That's mm. why a lot, a lot of us come here. Mm. So, Mel, you were you were 16 when you first had a ride on a train. Yes. And what do you remember about it? Um, it was a little bit sort of frightening at first, because the first time I saw a train, actually saw a train. Yes, and I was coming from Jamaica then landed at Heathrow Airport and then I took um, a car to um, Paddington and then from Paddington uh, the, went on the train and um, <laughs> to Bath but on the train they had um, the, to um, get the engine running they had to push coal in the front of it so there was a lot of smoke coming from the, the train, and I was, oh. <laughs> I, guess, I guess it was making a fair bit of really, noise. Yeah, a lot of noise and, you know. Hissing. Yes, and, yes. And then they take me up, and when, when the train comes, you know, they put me in it. Uh, you know, and then, I don't know what they, I don't know what they said to the person who on the train. But I didn't know a word until when they come to the bar to stop. But did you tell them where you were going? Because you would first when they when they when they when they came up when they came when they came off the ship, they asked him where he wanted to go. Okay. Yeah. And from there, I didn't say nothing else to anybody. Mm -hmm. We had trains in Jamaica, but I've never seen it because I live in the country area. When we went into the train, we had to sit in um, these cubicles. I think each cubicle hold about eight persons so sitting opposite each other mm. on the train with all different people. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so, well it was it was night. Mm. Oh, so no. I couldn't see it. <laughs> it was just <laughs> Yeah, it was in the night. Yeah. I travelled on the train to Bath, yes, yeah. So was it one train journey? One train journey. I said about two, three hours. I didn't hungry. Nobody gave nothing to drink. I didn't want to go to the toilet. I didn't. Okay. I just wanted to come to bath, and that's it. You know, see my brother, and you know, and, and see England. There was five of us. We were all nineteen-year-olds, and we we're going to the Isle of Wight. And of course, there were steam trains, you know, and rockety old carriages, and the train was absolutely packed when we got on it, bus by. Anyway, we started off, we were walking along the corridor, you know, along the side of the, inside the train, and then it started rocking a bit. And, I, and we had our suitcases in front of us, and I just went to go past somebody, and it rocked, and I hit the window out on the carriage. So of course, they, they, somebody pulled the uh, emergency chain, and the train stopped, and the guard came up, and he said, what's happening here? I said it was an accident. Just it touched it, kind of thing, and it fell out. 
So they pulled us in at Westbury, and we were there for about an hour, uh, well, at least an hour, while they put a new window in. And of course, everybody's moaning then because the train's late. So did they haul you out onto the platform and then said, this is him, that's no, the bloke, that's no, why they, we're waiting for a lot him. Of them, a lot of them knew <laughs> <laughs> it was us because making such a noise, I suppose. You know the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the train to have that round door? Yeah, just, just... Well, I'd gone in there. When it was time to come out, could I get that door open? I was pressing the buzzer for the, for the guard. Nobody came. I was banging on the door. Nobody came. Ages it was before the guard finally was passing. When I come out the door, all the heads of the people on the train were all waiting to see who was coming out the door. <laughs> I have had many mishaps on the trains, you know. The worst one was from Mangotsfield, well, from Temple Meads to Green Park, when there's no toilets on there, and the carriages were just enough for eight people to get in. So if you've been out of a few drinks... They supplied you with a bucket, or...? <laughs> no. Do I have to say? <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, the window, window came come down. Window yeah. yes. came pulled a sash and the yeah. window crumbed down. Yeah. Well, that was the steam. That was when the steam was about. Like, a lot of steam, know. I would think, particularly yeah. on a cold winter's night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good days, though. Good days. Great days. And when I woke up the next morning and saw the houses and everything, oh dear, I said, oh dear. Yeah, I thought it was um, factories, the houses were factories. The chimneys, yeah, the chimneys on the house and everything like that. That was another experience as well. Yeah. Everything was so dull, yeah. you know, which in Jamaica, the houses are painted um, bright colours. Yeah. And from there, I just take, take it as it is, as, as bad as it is. When I look at bad, I see just like Antigua, the green grass of home. And the, the hills and the cattle. Yeah. But then I didn't like the weather. It, I came in June, and it was quite cold then in June. Put my um, summer clothes on and went out. Mm. And uh, <laughs> it was quite chilly, really. <laughs> the sun was shining, but for me it was quite cold. I think because drop of temperature, my temperature changed, you know. Because in Jamaica it's quite hot, really. Warm in the West Indies. And when you come to England, it's different. You know, you feel cold. Mm. What time of year was it when you arrived? Oh, it came in June. So it was June? Yeah. So what but year was this? 1956. Together we're a nightmare revealing that something that's so bad is so good. You never hear what I'm saying, and I never notice your hair. Together we're a couple concealing that we're not such a terrible pair. And so the years they come and go, we're getting closer, we're getting nowhere. But all the same, it has been fun We're getting closer, getting nowhere We're still young The train now standing at Platform 2 is the 12.50 from Middle Age Manor Calling at World of Workway, Courtship Close, Wedding Junction, Starter Family Street, Relocation Road, Social Life Lane and Offspring Move Out Orchard. Arriving at Middle Age Manor at 16.15. Sorry, I could see the bridge from my bedroom window and at night, we used to call it Black Bridge. 
And at night, I remember seeing the train go by. It was like a caterpillar lit up in the dark. Like all children, probably about the age of 10 or 11, it was our, the playground of, of, of the summer holidays. Uh, the things we did when we were kids, and we used to lie in the big metal girders of the bridge. It was an iron bridge. And we used to lie in the girders and wait for the train to rumble above our heads. And um, we used to walk the line. And um, as you know, the uh, the sleepers, they were embedded in small grey rocks. Do you remember those? I certainly yeah. do, yeah. Oh, they were ideal for our catapults that we had in our pocket. There was a group of us, three or four of us, who caught the same train every morning. And if I was a bit late, my colleagues, hang on a minute, he's coming, he won't be long. They'd hold the train up till I got there. And of course they do the same for each other, you know. If any one of the four of us wasn't there at 7.23, they'd hold the, tr hold the train up. Sometimes we had, we had to dash from one platform to the other to catch, the, to catch this other train going up. Otherwise it would have gone without us, you know. But the naughty side of things, well, so we used to break into the workmen's huts on the railway, yeah. on the line itself. And they were detonators, and they were used to warn the steam trains of moss, of fog and mist. Mm. Um, they were, they were out around, and we used to bring them back into Chippenham Town Centre on a Sunday afternoon, nice and quiet, and get a big boulder and smash it on top of this detonator. Boom! Right. In sleepy, sleepy market town of Chippenham. So you used to take the train to watch Bath City in the 1950s? Two, two away matches, oh, yeah, quite a lot, quite a lot. It was, well, they, even the team travelled by train in those days. Many years ago, my dear mother, she's not with us anymore, my best ever friend, and um, I'd managed to get tickets to go to Wimbledon back in the 80s. And we'd been having a lovely day and it got to about half past five and we had to leave. And I said, grab hold of me. And there were lots of people changing for the next match. Mm. So we got to the bottom of the steps and whoosh, they went, whoosh. A whole group of young, young lads and Mother was suddenly on the floor. Are you all right, Mother? Yes, I think so. I will get uh, uh, the ambulance. They had a look at her. She seemed all right, but she needs to be looked at. I said, where are we going to go? And she said, tooting. I said, oh, right, OK, then. Jump in. So off we went. So we got there, and um, they looked for her for a long time, and it got to about um, 12 o'clock, and they said, well, how are you going to get home? I said, well, we're going on the, on the train. Ah, I said, there's not another train till about 6 o'clock. Oh, dear. She said, well, she's all right. She can walk all right now. So they they took us, very kindly, they, they took us to Paddington. And when we got to um, Paddington, and we said, can we stay here? Yeah, if, if you want. And I think the train came at half past six. That was my day at Wimbledon. The train got us, uh, got us there and got us back. I believe you were, uh, you you travel for free sometimes on, well, on the train. Well, we did. The, the the idea was to in Chippenham station, to buy a platform ticket, uh, and then onto the station. Uh, first of all, warm up in the waiting room with a big coal fire glowing, yeah. and then sneak onto the train as it arrived on the station. Dodging the the, uh, the train conductor, destination Temple Meads, climb over the fence, into Bristol into John Lewis, nicking pens and rubbers and things and silly things. Then back home again, we did. Yeah. And we got away with it. And it was exciting. So once, 
if you're doing something naughty, it's exciting, isn't it? Don't you think so? Oh, very much and, so. Um, when you're a young boy, we had so much fun when we were children. I was about 16 and my grandmother had been told that she wasn't very well and she said she'd like a, a train ride to Switzerland. So we all four of us, my mum, dad and my grandmother and myself, we got on this train and we went to Switzerland and we slept on the train. But I couldn't sleep very well, I was too excited. <laughs> And we went around Switzerland, which was a lovely place to visit, and then we came back on the train as well. I used to live in Penge, near the Crystal Palace, yes. and we used to go up to the railway station at West Penge station and get the train and to Brighton. And I can just about remember taking my bucket and spade. Yes. Um, the first time I went, when we got out the train the other end, um, I couldn't see the sea and it's quite a long walk down to the sea. And then when we got there, I said, oh, it's too big, it's a big puddle. <laughs> and where's the sand? Because it's all stones there. And we used to have a fish and chip dinner and uh, then come back on the train again. Did you, did you paddle? In, in the yes, sea? I did paddle, paddle, yes. But you shot your bucket and spade, didn't you? Yes, well, I did. No sand? No, oh, no. But we were a bit upset then. <laughs> oh, what a shame. A friend of mine, we decided to go to Wesley Supermare in October for Halloween night. But she had a mobile scooter, so she had permission to go on the train with it. So that all went well, went up the ramp, fine. We got there, no problem. Coming back, we had a bit of a disaster. She bought a, a crockery set in the second hand shop. Yeah. They didn't realise, even though she'd asked for the, the ramp, it wasn't there for us. And then they did get the ramp up for us, yeah. but the train was due to go. So she's going along in her scooter. I'm running along the side with this crockery. Got, got, I, this was about 10 years ago, mine. I got on the train. Got on the train. Yeah, settled down. And I, for some reason, put my little case and I put my handbag by the side. Anyway, as we're coming into Bath, I said to my friend, my phone's going off. And I'd realised my handbag, because a lot more people got on, yeah. was at the bottom of the luggage. Right at the bottom of the luggage. So the phone's going off. Yeah, you can't get I it. I can't get it. You can't get it. So I had to get off at Bath. I had to get off. You had to get it. It had gone to Paddington, the train. So I did phone her, ah. and I phoned the phone, and they answered it. And I said, oh, she said, we've got your phone and your handbag. I said, there's £10 in my purse. There was no money in there now. I thought, well, fair enough. So unfortunately I had a good time, but it was a, a, bit, of a bit of disaster towards the end. Towards the end. And that was my journey on the train to Western Supermare and back. Western Supermare, Halloween, Western Supermare. Yeah. With the ramp, the crockery and the handbag. Yeah, and the handbag and, the, and leaving my phone because I had to get off the train. Yeah. And it was going away and I couldn't find it. I couldn't get at it. <laughs> Never mind. You Thank to, you. Yeah. I used to go to Western once, once perhaps twice a year if, if we were lucky. We were very excited, there was, there was three of us. We've still got some old photos of, in the um, deck chairs. I come from a family of 14, so we had a lot of children in the family. And um, we used to all go down to Western Supermare on the train. We used to go down in the taxi to the train station and then all, all get on the train night with my mum and dad. And um, we used to enjoy it because we only went once a year. So we really had a good time, like, Absolutely. you know. And um, we was allowed one ice cream each, well, which we know. thought was nice yeah. because we didn't have that much. No. And then we'd all traipse back home again. Yeah, come back with a stick of rock, probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When it's going home, it's making sure, you know, you've got every all the children with you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Checking you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go on. And you didn't miss, any, you know, leave yeah. anything behind and that. But then we enjoyed it. We had a lovely life. Yeah, you know, and I wouldn't change it for the world.
The train now standing at Platform 3 is the 2000 hour for Autumn Year's Promenade. Calling at Grandchild Grange, Retirement Rise, Bereavement Boulevard, Downsize Dell and Care Home Hill. Arriving at Autumn Year's Promenade at 23.59 for stations to Heaven's Staircase, Change at Care Home Hill. I used to catch a train at Victoria to go to Robert High and one day the, the guy pulled up with the train he said to be coming and I went inside with him and all he did he just pressed this lever the damn bus just and the train just go take his hands off and it's it stop so I said what an easy job but I have to admire these our train drivers because you can easily drop to sleep because you you're in darkness mm. with uh, on the ground. You're in darkness all the time. All you can see is, is, is the track. So, you, you know, and all of a sudden, this light up here in front of you, that, you know, the station. Yeah. So, they had it. it it's, to me, it's a rough job. Getting the kids ready of a morning, too, for the journey. So we'd make our sandwiches corned beef or salad, maybe an apple or a banana in with it. Then we'd have games and that, that we took with us. We tried to get a compartment to ourselves. Lucky enough, we always managed to do that, so we could play our games. But if there was other kids in the compartment, we always invited them to join in our games. And then we play a word game, if they were old enough. Mm. But mostly we played Scrabble. Yeah. Yeah, because that takes a long time. Yeah, we enjoyed our journey. Yeah. Yeah, because when you play the game, the time flies, and they no sooner arrive in Liverpool. I went to meet someone on, and my brother-in-law had his ashes put in the funnel. He sort of um, them. put the car into the engine sort of thing. But he wasn't old enough to drive the trains until he was about 21. But he did do it, you know, like, if there was nobody about, another chap would teach him, you know. He worked there from 1966 to, no, 1963 till 70s and that. He wanted his wife to put the ashes in the funnel. And he just put it in the train and it, it was lovely, it was just like a cloud, you know what I mean, when you get, when you go in a plane, mm. you get that. Mm. And it was really nice, I'd never seen that before. I can just about remember, um, it was after the war and um, I used to, we lived near Penge Station, uh, that's the other Penge Station, and I used to stand at the railway station and wave to the trains 
and said that, you know, thank you for sending my daddy home safely. Because he was in the war, was he? was he? in the war, yes. He went to Italy. Oh. He was on the Red Cross ambulances. And he, and he came back, he wasn't injured? No. no. Oh, Only in his lovely. mind, oh, you know, mind. yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, he was sad. a very um, quiet man and it yeah. was quite a frightening experience. I can imagine, yeah. yes. Yes. The rail in wartime, the only experience I used to have was on having been in Sibby Diggs in London, I would come home the weekend and then go back on the Monday morning on the early morning train. Now the train I caught would be a passenger train which left Penzance at seven o'clock Sunday evening, arrive in Bath Station at just after four in the morning and then in Paddington at half past seven. That was 12 and a half hours blackout all the way, in wartime, not knowing whether the track was bombed or not, and never once did I know him to be more than five minutes late. I gather your grandma was a bit musical. Oh, yes, yes, she was. Um, she lived opposite the railway station, and she had this squeeze box. Well, if she had any visitors come, she'd hang out her bedroom window, and she'd play some music to them. And as the train was leaving, she'd get a white hanky and she'd be waving them off. I lived in Pablo, near Pensford, and I lived on top, up high on the hillside. And from the front of my house, or my mum and dad's house, I could look across the fields to see the railway. And the trains used to go backwards and forwards there. And my mum, there's a man who used to work in the back field because they had a field behind them. And when it hooted at one o'clock, she used to tell him it was one o'clock for him to have his dinner. Oh, time for dinner, <laughs> yeah. one o'clock hooter. Yeah, one oh, right. she used to say one o'clock, Tom. <laughs> I can remember it playing. Remember that well. Yes. We'd been to Ostend for a week and that in the early 70s. And, that, and we caught the, the, obviously the Dover train to Paddington. When we got to Paddington, it was very crowded train up to Paddington they wouldn't let us get off and that because there was a suspect builder coming from Germany that had been bitten by a dog and was suspected of having rabies so consequently they wouldn't let us off the train we had to stay on the train we were a little bit worried because we got um, rooms booked in a hotel and had to be there by six o'clock anyway the police were on the station and uh, the loudspeaker was telling everybody not to get off, but people started getting off onto the rails, so they were chasing them. Then the forensic people appeared with all these white suits on, which is like something from space. And eventually, after some time, um, and after that, uh, they let us off, but we all had to give our names at the gates to get out from the station. And I should never forget his name. His name was Hans Frieder Krauss. There was an American came off one of the trains and he was asking about his brother and he was telling us about his brother and the state, I don't know what state he was from, but uh, he was quite charming. But and I was terribly interested in the goings and the comings of the train and the people that were vibrant, you know, loads of people with different shorts, characters, clothes, speaking, well, quick, come on, let's go. And, and the chap that was, it was like a lollipop stick <laughs> and flat and that was to slow the train down and the lights on top of the train were vibrant, vibrant as well and the moving of it, of the train and then something went zoos, right the fast as hell and it was cargo something for um, maybe a factory or some factory but um, it was quite thrilling actually about 16 years ago, um, I found the station incredibly depressing. Um, it's the heart of our community. It's the gateway into our wonderful city of Bath. And I felt it needed a bit of work doing on it. And um, I popped down to see the station manager at Bath Spa and said, am I allowed to do any work down there? And if I am, would you support me, etc." And he said, yeah, sure. And he said, just wait a minute. And he went off, he came back and he, held up a leaflet saying, adopt your station. I said, right, if that's what I have to do, that's what I'll do. A few people from the community 
thought, hey, we want to get involved in this and we're well up for it. And so um, 16 years on, you see the result that you see today. And just over time, people learnt about the project and we began to find plants being left outside my door, up by the gateways, and some had names on, some didn't. And if anybody still wants to do that, please put the name of the plant on, because <laughs> it's useful to know. Yes, it is, yeah. I've been volunteering since the Queen's Diamond Jubilee, which obviously is 10 years ago. I've been coming the same amount of time, really. I was helping down here. Lots oh, of apple yeah. trees. There's yeah. lots of possibilities. Yeah. A lovely mm. lot of apples in the autumn. Mm. We say to people, do take them, but not many people do. No, they don't. They get wasted. They get no. wasted. It smells like mm. a cider house here sometimes <laughs> when they're all rotting away. <laughs> it's one of the nice things about working down well, here, because people do come up and chat yeah. when you're busy. The chap who did the train here, he was 90 years old, and he'd been doing that for a long time. Yes. It was his pride and joy, and sadly he died very mm. recently. What Brian and Richard have done for working on the train section is just marvellous. It's almost like in memory of John, because John, this section was his pride and joy. And um, in view of the fact that we've now lost dear John, um, it's, sort of, it's like a tribute to him to get it, up, uh, get it all up nice again the way he would have loved it. When it was due for a time, some little tank engine would couple up at the front and away you'd go. They were in different compartments. Um, in the long carriage, of course, you sat at the tables. Sometimes we managed to get a table if we were in the long carriage. You could see a train, we used to all say, when there used a train come in and yeah. You know, really excited to yeah, every job. see it. Oh, old, old ones are back, weren't they? Yeah. I, I like trains though. Yeah. It's such a smooth journey, isn't it? Like, you know what I mean? And you can see such a lot. You can see all the greenery and all the houses, whatever, can't you? It's nice. You, you, you could just sit there and watch all the miles go, go by. I, like I say, I'm, I'm glad I'm at an age where I remember those giant iron maidens we call the steam of loco locomotive. Yeah. I really am. Well, like I say, I've really enjoyed the, uh, the whole build up to the film and uh, I hope you've enjoyed my story of, uh, of the railways as a, as a child. And uh, I'm at the end of the line now, but before I go, I'd like to say just one more thing. Tickets, please. Is that good? Yeah. yeah.